Okay. Uh, okay. Hello. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, William. Uh, <laughs> we're live now. Uh, hello, I'm John from Broadsheet, and you're very welcome to tomorrow tonight. We're joined by William Campbell, who's the presenter of the Here's How podcast, uh, a journalist and um, well-travelled uh, academic. I, I, William. I don't think I'm very academic, but uh, I've been around a bit. Okay, okay. Um, and the background is the your Here's How podcast. Sadly, the yeah, the, the how part is... Should, should I move? Should I move? No, no. <laughs> okay, we'll give people a good look at that. Your chroma key or uh, green screen is very like Wanda Lee Wagon in the 1980s. You know, it's, but... it's very much got that vibe, doesn't it? I, I was going to say Bosco. Ah, <laughs> okay. Well, I'm a little bit, probably a little bit older. Um, so William uh, presents the Here's How podcast and uh, the latest one is a very good interview with Jim McCallaghan, who uh, Finn Foyle, T T D. Yeah, backbench T D. Yeah. By choice. By choice, yeah. Um I just wanted to, can you see the screen there? Uh, I can see you, yeah, very clearly. Okay. And that's your interview with Jim McCallan, which which is uh really well worth a listen. Like uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you sound like you're in shock, John. No, no, I was it's just so when you after RT interviews and stuff, when you hear the, the you really uh he comes across, I have to say, as incredibly dour and very unimpressive. And I'm going to be honest. Then. I mean, you, you talked about him as a, lead, a potential leader. Mm -hmm. You really need to go to whatever Miriam's, you know, Miriam can teach him a, a thing or three about coming across. He comes across as sort of like a just kind of truculent, bored South Dublin kind of. I think the problem with, with, with him and particularly Leo before him, is that they believe, I, I, it, it's too much to say that they believe it's theirs by right, but it's certainly the case that they think that the, their type of person yeah. is the type of person who should be Taoiseach. And uh, the two most recent school teachers uh, we've had in the office, 50%, yeah. uh, 66 yeah. percent of the of the last three t-shirts that the school teachers but says uh, uh, something else and i don't think that's it's necessarily a good thing but it's very clear that their political instincts are different and one thing i've kind of come to the conclusion recently is that people who are landed into high office and who haven't like clawed their way up from the lowest county council election all the way up to the cabinet yeah, there's a lot of things wrong with that route, but one of the right things about that route is it teaches you how, uh, you know, how politics works. And people who are parachuted into positions, I think, of, um, uh, uh, I forgot his first, sorry, his first name, Lee, the RCE journalist who won uh, South Dublin seat. George, George Lee. By election. George Lee is his name, yeah. And, you know, when you're, and uh, we'll go down the Donald Trump route, but, you know, someone who was parachuted without ever having spent a, a, a day in a, in, a, in a smelly back room in a pub listening to people moan about their potholes or whatever, I think they're achievements in politics are almost inevitably vastly less than they expect and this whole thing of, of having to deal with the electorate i think almost comes across as as uh, insulting to them yeah there's also something like what what does jim represent in terms of an alternative to yeah why would you vote for him that's it's it's really hard to i i had somebody on the podcast uh, uh, last year um uh, leader of AIM2 and only TD of uh, AIM2, Padre Tobin, and yeah. he said, uh, and, and my question for him was, of all of his policies, you know, which of them could Fianna Fáil, any average Fianna Fáil backbencher not ascribe to? And I think the answer, a weakness of, uh, of, of AIM2 is very few, is the answer to that question. But his answer to that, I think, was quite good. He said that Fianna Fáil is essentially a husk. It's a you know, it, it the, the its reason for existence and its, its lifeblood is gone 
from it. Uh, and I suspect they're in very, very serious decline. Um, it, and what Jim O'Callaghan may end up leading might not be worth the effort. Well, yeah, it does sort of sense it, it feels whatever that term, pale, male and stale a little bit. Yeah, really, yeah, uh, yeah. To reach that. Um, we go straight into the papers. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, William, if we could. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The Irish Sun here, uh, writing up set of racist at all. Um, this was a, a Trilly student who was let off, left free from court. He was given probation for um, vile racist abuses. Um, yeah. Defending uh, the footballer Ian Wright. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm not. I'm missing the sport gene, so I. I needed okay. to check who Ian Wright was, but he seems he's a. He's he's a, a pretty well known. <laughs> Come on. I'm, I'm not, it's true it's true no, that's, that's, okay um uh um but it, it hardly matters he's uh, british i think he's black and uh seems to have gotten really a, 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 a ferocious amount and level of abuse um from this kid i guess uh who uh who was clearly an idiot um I think sending someone to prison for that, however vile it is, for a first offence, for, you, you know, you, you purely speculating here, but you'd imagine uh, that this isn't uh, the highest functioning or, or least dysfunctional person uh, in the area uh, um, who's, who's doing this. This isn't the sort of thing that, you know, well-adjusted people do. You know, yeah. I can see, I, I can see a good argument for not throwing someone like that into prison, um, but applying the probation act, you know, that essentially means that there's no conviction recorded, and that really is a very, very light. It's not even a sentence because he, uh, because he doesn't get a conviction recorded, and he can then you know put on a CD or whatever. He's never been convicted of a crime. Um, it, it is, I mean. I imagine any future employer who Googles him will get this very, very quickly. So he will suffer a penalty like that. But it's not a good look. It's not a good look, really, that type no. of uh, let off. No, and um, uh, Ian Wright says that he's disappointed and tired. I'm sure he's just sick of this. Uh, um, the Irish Examiner, uh, very sad story on the cover of the uh, uh, Lindsay Bennett. Mm -hmm. uh, she received this is regarding the smear test sorry i'm yeah, not yeah, uh, yeah. so the, the cervical uh check smear tests i think she yeah. um and, and i don't know the background to her cases and i know that in some cases um there are you know you need, this is obviously a, a situation where you need a huge amount of sensitivity and people are dying in many cases and Pointing out that there are legal holes or loopholes in there in a case they might be taking is is hardly a sensitive thing to do. But I think there are there are different types of people who have been, and I don't know uh, where this woman uh, fits into this, but I know that there are different types of cases here, right. and in some cases, while the the person got an incorrect result back. It was an incorrect result that couldn't, you know, it, it couldn't reasonably with the medical technology that we have, we can't expect a 100% accuracy rate on that. She got a false, a false negative. And she got three, I think. You know, I just said it quite, quite possibly, yes. It, the, the, and obviously, well, all of the people who are most negatively affected by this are people who got a false negative. That's to say, they were told they don't have cancer and it turned out that they did. Okay. And I know that doctors have pushed back very hard on that and said, hang on a second, if you only use diagnostic tests where we have a 100% perfect uh, rate of accuracy, then we're going to be left with very few uh, diagnostic tools. Okay, but um, that's, that's probably for a different day. I mean, yeah, yes, exactly. That's that, that's the point that I was making. It's, okay. it's it's something that's very difficult, but we shouldn't discourage people from from uh, particularly women from from going for those tests. And oh. even when a test 
isn't 100% foolproof, it can have a, a significant degree of medical value and save a lot of people's lives. Yeah, well, I think even, even a lot of the victims have, have, you know, encouraged people to, to go for the tests as well. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah. The AstraZeneca jab ruled out for over 70, this is an uh, ongoing saga. Yeah, this comes up in a lot of the front pages and the, the, um, the I think we see on one of the British front page, pages that, that they've vaccinated 10 million people at this stage, which is one sixth of their population nearly. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it, the, you know, I, I don't think even their greatest friends would suggest that the British government have handled this terribly well. They've got the worst death rate in the world, bar none from coronavirus. Um, yeah. But they do seem to be powering ahead with the, the, the vaccines. Yeah, this uh, is the, um, 10 million jobs. Uh, and they say they're past the peak of the second wave. Yeah, um, that, that does seem to be uh, uh, light at the end of the tunnel. And, and I, I don't think that uh, in Ireland, are we anywhere close to one sixth of the population being vaccinated? No, I think it's about 11%. Um, uh, William, as a, a, a ferocious anti Brexit tier, or you're a, a, a big remainer, um, it's, it's a very bad week for the EU, isn't it? I mean, it's very. Y yeah. Brexit tiers now can just say, look, Look, this is what we're up against. This is what, you know, this is why we're out. Um, I, I think, well, first of all, I'm not sure that I'm a ferocious anti-Brexiteer. Anti That's ah, uh, William, you are. I'm not, I, I'm not British. I may have fun pointing out the nonsense that some Brexiteers say, but I think at the end of the day, uh, if the UK wants, and they followed their own somewhat curious internal democratic processes, if they decided to leave the EU, they decided to leave the EU, and that has to be respected. Um, I think that the Irish Depart Department of Foreign Affairs, in most cases, has played a blinder in this and protected Irish interests very, very well and got all sorts of uh, countries that you would think, you know, the people there might have difficulty finding Ireland on a map, you know, line them very, very solidly. Well, they couldn't find our phone number last week. <laughs> quite, quite possibly. No, um, no, I mean, they couldn't. I mean, oh, uh, oh, they, didn't, they didn't consult with us. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, yes. And, and that, that was like a huge dropping of the ball. And it, is, um, that all, is that all that is? A dropping of the ball? I mean, it's the most callous kind of uh, diplomatic gaffe, really. I mean, it's, we, it's literally like we don't it's an enormous gaffe. It's an enormous gaffe. I, I think... Um, doesn't that show? Doesn't that ex show to you where where we stand in their thinking? We're just, uh, just uh, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, Ireland Ireland is, is what a one percent of the population of the EU, and we can't normally expect more than one percent of the the, the well, consideration. We'd, we'd expect a phone call. Yeah, I, I would. Yes. No. 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 This was a huge error. They made a huge mistake. Do you think it's an error? How can that be an error? I mean, they just oh oh. Did you ring Ireland? No. 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 no, no, no you were supposed no, to ring Ireland. Well, well, what, what, when I say error, I mean they did the wrong thing, I, I, and they 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 made a huge mistake. Uh, uh, I, I hear what you're saying. That you know. Anyway, yeah. Whether, I'm sorry, I don't want to get stuck into it. Then. Yeah. Whether intentionality is there, but the but what they did was hugely wrong, and I think that has repercussions uh, in the North uh, that nobody expected. Wow. Um, and, and I think, you know, right through the Brexit negotiations, the Department of Foreign Affairs was obviously on the ball, alerting people to not make a mess of things for Ireland. And that didn't happen either. I, I would imagine that Michael Martin is furious. Um, he, they, you know, yeah. Irish politicians tend to be politely furious, given that, you know, Antena will, if you're not strong, you've got to be smart. So insulting people doesn't go down well. So they, no. you know, but uh, I would think behind closed doors, they will, will be uh, very, very uh, clear that this can never happen again. Right. But the, right. I, I think actually what happened was some British tabloid headlines were being uh, circulating online and they, who, and we don't always get the same version of, for example, the sun or whatever in, in, in Ireland, as is in most of uh, England. Uh, um, and there were the Express and so forth were celebrating 
um, withholding British made vaccines from the EU. And somebody very, very cack handedly said, well, if you can do that, I can do that. And had no consideration and understanding of, of uh, uh, the situation in Ireland. And, uh, but uh, right. okay. no, no excuse for it, I would agree. Yeah. Um, Sunak concerned scientists are moving goalposts on lockdown. This is, um, I mean, with Britain, they want to, they're, well, the government want to, uh, to Britain to reopen. Yeah. Yeah, this is Daily Telegraph. And the scientists are a bit like Nefet and uh, the government here. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm Rishi, Sunak, Rishi, yeah, Rishi, Rishi Sunak is the, is the British uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, essentially the finance minister, and he is popular in the Conservative Party and uh, that gives him power at Cabinet. I am very suspicious of uh, amateur epidemiologists uh, um, second guessing people who are actually qualified to know what they're uh, uh, what they're doing, and as we see in Ireland, as we saw in the, in the UK, the political interventions of let's say, let's get things open for Christmas, let's keep it open for the New Year, that's turned out to be a catastrophe. Well, are you um, a zero COVID person? When you... I, I I don't know enough to to. You know, I would hope I'd have the humility to say I'm not an expert on that, so I can't, I, I couldn't say. Um, but I think a lot of politicians would need to say that as well. And if, um, you know, the I saw one chart that, that uh, if you had become infected on Christmas Day, as we now know a huge number of people did, then your peak infectivity you would be most likely to infect other people was exactly one week later on New Year's. And you, uh, uh, William, you literally think, I mean, do, do you, you believe that they can ascertain that people were infected on Christmas Day? Uh, um, no, 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 I'm just saying in, in terms of the, the uh, when you get infected, you are most infectious to other people one week later. We know that uh, there was a huge amount of mixing of people as the lockdown was lifted in Britain uh, for Christmas and then on New Year's. And we've seen in the weeks after that enormous spikes in people uh, uh, in, the, in, in infections being reported. So uh, clearly we don't know the exact day, but it, but it doesn't take, um, uh, in that you, perhaps you don't have to be an expert to say, OK, well, what events were happening where there was a large number of people mixing. And what, what would you? Time frame. How would you have dealt with Christmas differently? I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't know that you could have. And separated uh, granny. I mean, put granny in a separate room. It, I know a lot of people did that. Um, uh, uh, particularly where they were, where you know, where they were vulnerable, where they knew of of particular medical vulnerabilities. But it, that does really expose the different duty that politicians have because they have to listen to the scientific advice and sometimes they have to say, you know, politically we can't do that. So it might be the case and it might have been correct that somebody came along and said that we, you know, we could do what seems to be logical from that scientific advice, but we know that that could blow up even worse than you've seen, for example, rioting in the Netherlands, that you can only bottle people up so much. Yeah, but, um, but you, you were saying you wanted to give them a, a more bottled up Christmas. And no, 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 no. It is a yeah. va it's a valid political decision to make to say that's the scientific advice, but I don't think we can hold the line. Therefore, uh, but the scientific uh, advice, it, it, I mean, it's been clouded in so much. I mean, the, the figures have been fudged all around. Do you really you'll agree with that? I mean, fudged uh, in the uh, sense that they're not realistic figures like the death figures they're not death from covid they're death with covid that these are people who could be dead. i mean when you when you fit when you drill down to these it seems such a disproportionate uh reaction to to what to to the to the effect of to the potency of this of this virus i mean the deaths are are I, 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 awful, but... I, th I think I think I think that you won't find very many people who are have credible scientific uh, qualifications in this to say that uh, no, this is just people who happen to have COVID who are getting 
you know, run over by a bus. Um, I, I, I think to, to, it's not a discussion for now, but I, but it's an overwhelming, you know, I think consensus outside particular circles that COVID is killing lots of people and the making distinctions of angels dancing on, on the point of the pin. But no, here, if you go, if, look, if, uh, I said this a few weeks ago and I'm not, I, I, I don't really want to wish to, it's such an area of controversy and it, yeah. it causes so much upset. But if, for instance, I was positive COVID and I had a car crash, Mm -hmm. The death would be would be would initially would be down as COVID. You do realise that. I mean, that's worldwide, William. And it, it, that's, that, that's, that's that's the initial thing, and and but I mean, but it's only when a coroner can 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 declare, and that those figures. And and there, yeah, you're absolutely right. That that things, that, that things are, are you know can be updated in the light of new information, but you know if you want to see for example the the um the change in and i remember somebody leafing through the death notices yeah well, uh, 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 um, that massively expanded just uh, uh, there's a lot more people dying okay okay yeah i know i know i know Let, let's move on anyway just um, just to mention that um, brendan gleason uh, got a golden globe nomination playing donald trump in the uh the, the telly biopic about james comey's book I, I, do, do, do you think we haven't seen enough of donald trump is donald trump someone who you just haven't got enough of over the past four years and you really want to get a bit another trump <laughs> hit <laughs> Well, you guys, you see, it was it was the anti-Trumpers who were completely obsessed with them. You know, the the pro-Trumpers are not as um, animated as, as the anti-Trumpers. Do you know? I, what I, mean? I, I just never want to hear of him again. Well, you, you you didn't stop writing about him or talking about him for four years. But, I mean, well, me? Well, anti-Trump. Yeah, you would be a very virulent anti-Trumper. I would be. I barely commented on him. Ah no! Come on now. You you wrote a piece about the the, the storm, storming the Capitol like it was. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like it was a, a, a coup that he had organized. I mean. I don't know if he organized. I mean, I didn't comment <laughs> on whether I did. I do. In fact, I think it didn't contain his name. But I said that the coup was an exceptionally serious. Uh, oh thing. come on! Uh, coup is come on. You've been around. That riot or... invasion of the Capitol was an exceptionally serious event. Invasion of the well, okay, okay. Well, we were we're we're not going to agree on much now tonight. Okay. Um, <laughs> can, I, uh, can we? A nation applauds Captain Captain Tom. I think we can both agree that Captain Captain. We can both agree that Captain Tom is a. Was uh, yes, man. he seems he seems to have been a. a, a I mean, a, a sad a, a, that he dies. I mean, he's clearly a very elderly guy. Um, I would put a huge question mark over funding your public health service by. Um, uh, uh, sponsored walks, even if it's by a hundred-year-old fellow around your around his garden, uh, but nevertheless, um, yeah. sad death. Yeah. And uh, we're past the peak. Uh, this is uh, Professor Chris Whitty. Whitty, uh, mm -hmm. ten million New York Times. I just want to get you to um, at the Church of England and the Spectator. Uh, Mario Draghi, the return of Mario. Super Mario to um, to rescue is, Italy. Is is he to be the new Italian Prime Minister? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I lived in Italy. Um, it's the the politics. Uh, well, it's comical to the point that makes Ireland seem sane. Yeah, um, they have a lot of. Uh, they've had a lot of. Leaders. I I have to go completely away from the newspapers. I'll give you a fantastic anecdote. One when I was there. Um, the old Christian Democrats party, which would have been the Fine Gael equivalent, was the party that the priests would have thundered you have to vote for from the from the pulpit. And it was it was the biggest party. And they had this crusader symbol because a lot of Italians, particularly older, older Italians, would have voted for them would have been illiterate. And the uh, symbol for the Christian Democrats was a shield with a cross on it of the, the, the crusaders. Um, 
and that symbol, the visuality, because in Italy you actually put a cross on top of the party symbol to vote for them. Um, so that symbolism was very important. And when the uh, tangentopoli, the scandals, caused the Christian Democrat Party to disintegrate and almost disappear, um, there were several factions left, which were mostly um, fan clubs for particular ministers. Uh, and there were court battles, and one of the factions got to keep this very important logo that a lot of older people would have voted for no matter what. Um, lo scudo crociato, the crossed shield. And mm. one faction, that the faction that lost this court case, enormously cleverly, uh, chose as their symbol, because they weren't allowed to use the, the, the previous symbol, chose as their symbol a shield with no cross on it. And as their, so, their slogan, Echo lo scudo, here's the shield, aggiungi la croce te stessa, put the, sheet, you put the cross on yourself. Oh. And I thought that was... Uh, 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 the Italians, well, however chaotic their politics, their communication, their TV, their advertising is, is yeah, very yeah. stylish. Dreamly. Um, speaking of stylish, um, this doesn't affect you, but the more mullet action in the star. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they've become the hair, haircut of the lockdown for... Yes. For... Um, the discerning male, uh, yeah, yeah. and don't use social media if you're a moron. Well, um, well, I, I don't think. Uh, well, clearly that's 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 the um, uh, target market for the star. So uh, it's probably good advice for their readers. Yeah, well, I'm I'm, I'm working on the on the, on the bullet <laughs> as, as an avid star reader. Um, William, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, apologies if it became a bit too heated there. No, There's so it's many easy. things that we could have like taken an hour and. You know, yes. uh, tease them through. Um, and hopefully, you'll join us again. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And here's how is uh, I'll, I'll leave the, the details in the thing, okay? That's good. And uh, say hello to Judge and Mr. Crow. <laughs> 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 All the wagon tenants. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Bye. William. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks to you.